Hello there, this is going to be my clip on um, chapter two of your textbook pertaining to unemployment. Okay, so the agenda for this clip series will probably be more than one. I don't think I'll fit all this into 10 minutes. Is um, as follows. The first thing I want to do is, is some terminology. I want to talk about a few key terms like what, what does the term unemployment mean? What does the term labor force mean? What does the term um, unemployment rate mean? Okay, and then I also want to talk a little bit about the controversies about measuring unemployment. For example, in Canada, there actually are eight different unemployment rates. Gee, I don't know if you knew that, but there are. And of course, uh, this um, means that there are different ways of measuring it, and as such, this can get very interesting, very controversial, very fast, right? Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that situation. Then what I'm going to do is go over the four major types of unemployment. There's actually, um, could actually be viewed as three different types. The last one, seasonal unemployment, seems to be a little bit of a um, tricky to classify. So I'm going to read those and give those definitions to you. Though what they are is called frictional unemployment, structural unemployment, uh, seasonal, and then cyclical, which also goes by a different name called uh, demand deficit unemployment. Okay, so we'll go over that. And then what I'm going to do is to wrap up this uh, clip series on unemployment is to go into some more details. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about my own experience when I was in high school. That's sort of what made me interested actually in studying economics when I went off to uh, university for my undergraduate degree. Uh, what got me interested into this, which actually was this issue of unemployment actually. So that's uh, why I want to talk a little bit about my own personal experience. And I also want to bring up a couple other key concepts, very controversial, that you need to know if you're ever listening to any politicians talking or rambling on about stuff. One is called the NARU. That's an acronym, N-A-I-R-U, which stands for the Non-Accelerating Inflation Rate of Unemployment. I'll say that again, the Non-Accelerating Inflation Rate of Unemployment, also called the Natural Rate of Unemployment. The reason I want to do this is because it raises a very interesting question about whether it is actually possible to have a scenario of zero unemployment. That's sort of the question I want to sort of poke around at. Is is it possible to get, you know, zero, the, the big O, so to speak, zero percent unemployment? Is it possible? Now the, the thesis I'm going to argue is no. It is not possible to have a zero percent unemployment. It's just unrealistic. It's too. Uh, it would be uh, um, first of all impossible to have it, basically, and it also would be a bad thing to have. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, sometimes it's good to have some unemployment. Okay. P I mean, you know things like, uh, for instance, frictional, or search unemployment, might might actually be a good thing. Okay, so that could be quite controversial too. So we got a lot of con controversies and that's, that's always a, a good thing to have because it makes for more interesting debates. Okay, so that's the plan. So first terminology, uh, like some of these background terms and the controversies about measurement. Next, I'm gonna talk about the, the four major types. Okay, the frictional or search unemployment, seasonal, cyclical, or demand deficit. And then finally, structural. And then I'm going to go off on my little tangent here, uh, which I think I think is important because you know this these are important issues. I mean, especially with the current situation in the United States, there have there actually has been a lot of talk about the United States uh, slipping into a severe recession, possibly even a depression, which would be uh, interesting from a from an academic perspective to actually live through a depression. Unfortunately, it, uh, so from, from a sort of 
in your head that would be very exciting unfortunately that would also be a lot of misery and suffering so it might not be a good thing to have um, in sort of a practical sense you know because a lot of people suffer I mean the last time we had a depression which causes that cyclical or demand deficit to unemployment you know you get a lot of people suffering people starving you have food you know, food lines soup kitchens and then of course we ended up in the last recession or depression the uh, the one in the uh, 19 started in 1929 of course led to the second world war so depressions are not 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 a good thing to have from an economic and also just from a political and just to live a, to live a life perspective Right, that you, something you really don't want to have. Okay, so let's talk about uh, topic number one on my list here. What is unemployment? Okay, well that that is the million dollar question because you know the the most simple way of putting it is when you're talking about unemployment, what you are doing is you're counting up. Okay, so in other words, it's stock variable. Uh, you know, today we say how many people are unemployed. So we count them up. There are, you know, 800,000 or something like that. So it's a stock of people, and this is defined as adult workers. Okay. Um, what that actually means is is basically, you know, if you're older than a certain age, and you're then classified as being old enough to work. Right, so number of adult workers, so we're not including you know, six-year-olds, they're excluded from this uh, measure, who are not employed, okay, so you don't have a job, okay, but you're actively searching. So we're not looking at people who, let's say, have given up, or maybe they, um, for some reason, just can't work, maybe they had an injury, they were hurt on the job or something, and now they just... Uh, that they're going to be spending, let's say, the rest of their life in a hospital or something. So they're obviously not actively looking for another job. Okay? So that's basically the idea. So, we're, so un, when we say unemployed, we mean someone who is old enough to go get a job, wants to get one, is looking for one, but uh, can't find one. Okay, is, is unable to make the connection. Okay, the second term is um, labor force. Right, so the labor force is simply the sum of those who are either working, so they ha have a job, or are looking for work. Okay, so they, so this is basically that sum of of adults who are old enough and are working. So they have a job or are looking for one. Now if you take these two numbers, the number of people who are unemployed, and divide it by the labor force, then that gives you a ratio, and that is what's called the unemployment rate, in a simple sense. Okay? And I th let me see, is those all the terms I wanted to cover? Yeah, okay. So, the, so that, that is all I want to cover right now at this point. Uh, ne the next thing I want to talk about is some controversi co controversies in measuring this because of course how do we, you know, in, in a theoretical sense, I mean it's easy to to write, you know, U divided by L. Okay, that equals the unemployment rate. But then of course the question is, well how do you actually make this sort of happen in the real world? How do you sort of implement this, measure this, and that, that's where we get into some very fascinating um, issues, um, obviously from a measurement statistical perspective, but also from a political perspective, because I could, you could easily see if you're a cynical person how this could be uh, great if you're a politician, you're trying to spin a story, but I'm a wonderful politician, you know, I'm great, elect me. Well. Uh, as you'll see, these numbers have a lot of variability, and so you can see how there could be a sort of a selection bias, where if I was a politician, I'd pick one that makes me look better kind of thing. So let me come back to that uh, next.